Now, we have uh, a very important uh, part of uh, this event, that is uh, the inaugural address by His Excellency Sri K. Shankar Narayan, and Governor of Maharashtra. Let's give a big round of applause to uh, His Excellency Sri K. Shankar Narayan, and will be delivering inaugural address. Sri Prithiraj Savan, Honorable Chief Minister of Maharashtra, Thiru V. Narayana Swami, Honorable Minister of State for Planning, Parliamentary Affairs, Personal Public Grievances and Pensions, Srimadhi Fasiya Khan, Honorable Minister of State, Government of Maharashtra, Honorable Parliament Members, Honorable Ministers, and other dignities on dais, Ladies and gentlemen, I am delighted to be here this morning to officiate the opening of the 14th National Conference of E-Governors and to inaugurate the exhibition. And I take this opportunity to welcome the honorable ministers and the many important government officials and delegates to this two-day meet. I congratulate the Department of Administrative Reforms and Public Defenses the Department of Information Technology, Government of India, and the Directorate of Information and Technology, Government of Maharashtra, for organizing the conference on assessing the status of e-service delivery in rural areas with focus on agriculture. The conference has become an excellent platform where leaders, officials, civil society organizations industry and academic can exchange their ideas on making governance people-centric and people-friendly. Maharashtra is one of the most progressive states in the country in terms of economy and development. The state is also a leader in e-governance. It is therefore appropriate that Maharashtra has been chosen to host this year's conference. Ladies and gentlemen, we are living through exciting times. Post-globalization, we have witnessed revolutions in information technology, communications, space, science, nuclear technology, and so on. The life in cities and towns has altered beyond recognition from what it was 20 years ago. The Indian economy has strongly emerged as the fourth largest economy in the world. India has become the center of the world for constantly registering a growth rate of around 9% during the last few years. In order to continue our growth momentum, we have to make sure that the growth is inclusive and touches in the life of the last person on the radar. Why we need inclusive growth? A large number of people in India are yet to benefit from our economic growth and prosperity. A significant number of people are living below the poverty line. This includes rural and urban poor, women in rural areas, and particularly the people belonging to the scheduled caste, scheduled tribes, backward classes, minorities, and physically challenged. Improving governance requires that the benefits of the social and economic progress reach all the sections of society. The basic objective of governance is must remain welfare of the people, welfare of the last person until they are. Good governance implies people participation, rule of law, transparency, responsibilities, equity and inclusion and accountability. Decentralization of governance is very important. This is because it is a particularly form of governance that empowers people down to the grassroots level. The 73rd and 74th amendments to the Constitution were landmark steps towards taking democracy to the people. We have to give greater powers to the Panjaiti Raj institutions 
to achieve the objective of good governance and e-governance. The Panjaiti Raj institutions can function effectively only when there is proper training and capacity building at various levels. We need to train people, representatives, at the time we need to train our officials down up to the clerical level or to the thalit level. Having said that no amount of training will be enough if officials lack moral values, principles, motivation to serve. Public servants and officials must have human feeling towards the people, discipline and dedication to duty that the spirit of service to society must be inculcated among those who deal with the people. We need to change the attitude and mindset of public servants and officials so that they are sensitive to the rights of citizens. Secondly, proper cooperation and coordination between all levels of administration is very important. If we are providing computers to a school in, say, Gadjurli district, we have to first ensure that the village school has proper classrooms and power supply to run the computer and also train teachers to teach the students how to use computers. One of the biggest hurdles in good governance is corruption. Corruption is spoiling the fair image of the country in the eyes of the world. Corruption is preventing the fruits of development from reaching the common man. Uh, there is widespread resentment in society and media over corruption and its magnitude. In some departments, corruption has almost become a norm. I dream a day when corruption will become ridden. I want eagerness to make this happen by simplifying procedures and remove unnecessary requirements. Today, we are talking of e-governance. E-governance does not mean merely computerizing offices, launching websites, and opening information outlets in rural and urban areas. E-governance is about efficient governance, effective governance, and empowering governance. The ultimate goal of e-governance is to make all public services accessible to the common man in his locality at affordable cost. The theme for this year's conference mainly, rural e-service delivery status and challenges, is commendable. Many states and central government departments have developed e-service in selected areas. All the remaining states need to replicate such successful services in their own regions. I am eager to see e-governance projects in agriculture sector that would provide visible benefits to farmers and rural people. I do hope that the delegates will apply their mind to addressing issues like timely provision of advice to the farmers, food security, marketability, and commercial information relating to agricultural products, enhancing crop and lot productivity, and enhancing the reach of credit services to farmers. I have great expectations from your deliberations. I congratulate the winners of all the national awards for eagerness and convey my best wishes for the grand success of the conference and the exhibition. Jehin, Jehim Harris. Thank you so much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was uh, His Excellency Sri Keshankar Narayanan, Governor of uh, Maharashtra.